So, and now the official welcome to the Limits to Growth, Sustainability and the Circular Economy. Um, we're, today we're gonna do a two-part session. First, lecture zero is gonna be just organizational stuff. What's the course about? Exercises, lecture schedule, how to submit exercises, then the most common question, what about the exam and some other stuff, and then we'll do a cut. Next video recording is gonna be the actual first introductory lecture, and then you're done for today. So, let's get started. Um, one organizational thing right at uh, the beginning, when we record, we can answer questions, but usually most people don't want to be on the recording asking questions, so try to write them down, and then at some point we'll cut off the recording and you can cast all kinds of questions without being scared of ending up on YouTube because this is where we're gonna upload our videos. So if you're fine with being on YouTube for all eternity, ask questions during the lecture. If you would like to avoid that, write them down. We'll always have time to answer questions. Good. So first and foremost, all our stuff that we produce here is open source. So you will find all the material always on GitHub. You can run away with it, use it to do whatever you like with it. That also is true for the videos. Um, so we always have this disclaimer here. Who is we, or the team that is involved in this specific course, because we're way more people in the research group, but the specific team is myself. I'm running the research group. Anand, the magician in the background. If something doesn't work, usually Anand has a solution. And Nelly just joined us this semester. She will be your first contact person regarding exercises, any course questions. She will also send you regular reminders about sessions that will happen here in person some of them online and so on and so on. So whenever you have a question, Nelly will be the first person. And if Nelly cannot answer that question, I'm still there. <laughs> so that's the team. What's the group? The group is the Emerging Technologies for the Circular Economy group, where we do mostly research at the intersection of sustainability and IT. So how can we throw, or how can we use the tool of computer science to hammer down any sustainability problems? Sometimes the answer is we cannot and we should just shut all this stuff down because AI is not the solution to every sustainability problem, but we'll get to that later. We also do like general circular economy research. Um, how can we use resources as efficient as possible and as long as possible? And then we also have like some topics revolving around self-organized system, decentralized system, distributed system. So more the computer science stuff that you might expect from a research group in the computer science department. What other courses are we offering? Requirements engineering. It's probably for most of you that are now in the bachelor, a course that you will not cover until your master degree, but we also offer this in parallel now. And in the summer semester, we have the course Emerging Technologies for the Circular Economy, which is essentially intersection of IT and sustainability. So we'll look at different IT concepts like IoT and now for the next iteration, some new concepts. How can we use them to do something in a more sustainable way? But this being our flagship course, this being our most important course, and this is why you're here. If you want to get some more information, there's a website, etce-lab.com or .de. Um, you can also click via the slides there. We also have some short videos from the past that you can watch. They're in German, unfortunately, but like, they're mostly for procrastination reasons there. If you want to join us, if you're looking for a job, if you would like to convince me that I should hire you, write me an email and give a good reason why you would like to work for us and with us. Or if you're just looking for a thesis or a project topic, uh, you can also find a guide on how to apply on our website. And now, going a little bit away from the boring stuff, what's this course about? You might have heard or read when you applied to this university or when you took other courses here, that Theo Klausdahl has this overarching research theme of a circular economy and promoting sustainability. But for whatever reason, no one really thought about implementing a foundational course regarding that topic. There are super high-end advanced master courses about specific polymers and their role in the circular economy and how you can keep them as long as possible or how to most efficiently recycle them. But someone, no one, for whatever reason, no one really thought about teaching the basics, like what is the circular economy? 
most people have some kind of association with Kreislauf Wirtschaft in German or circular economy, but there's something about recycling and getting stuff back because recycling is usually how you get stuff back. But no one really teaches what the basics are or going down even further, what is climate change? Like how would you define climate change? If I now start pointing my finger at different people and ask you to define climate change and the difference between climate and weather or how you would sus uh, define sustainability, there might be some rough answers, but I probably won't get a proper definition out of most of you. And this is pretty much the first part that we're gonna cover in this course, getting this terminology straight. So that once you graduate here, you can have a proper discussion about this and not getting into this weird greenwashing discussions where the people throw in the argument of more sustainability, but in the end it's doing more harm than good to the society and to our planet. Then we'll also go to the circular economy. What is a circular economy? What's good about a circular economy? But then also doing something that's not very popular at this university. What's bad about a circular economy? Where is it not sufficient? Where does it not solve the challenges and problems that we have? And then we go into other parts beyond that topic, uh, looking at technology solutions, but also how society might have to adapt and change. And since we're computer scientists, we like to solve those problems using technology. And that sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll also look at, I have like a very technology critical view on how to bring sustainability and technology together, because all the other courses are probably gonna teach you why technology is great. So I will take the role of telling you or trying to teach you and convince you that technology is not always great. And then we're gonna also look into concepts like circular societies that go way beyond the circular economy. So not specifically a computer science course, more a critical assessment of sustainability related concepts and how we can change society. Um, as a foundation that you can then use in your later studies in the technology context. What should you learn by the end of the session? Of course, getting all these concepts straight, being able to properly define them, um, also having a broader understanding of the interrelations between those different topics. So once you know what sustainability is, what the circular economy is, how do different problems feed into each other, Usually there is not a simple solution that just says, okay, we replace all combustion engine cars with battery electric vehicles. That's a very linear thought process. That's very nice. That works for tabloid papers, but usually it's more complicated so that you understand these different interconnections between uh, different problems and that you can also make recommendations or decisions um, from different perspectives on those problems. Lecture plan today work and introduction as already announced. So today going to be like a rough overview uh, lecture, motivating the topic a little bit. And then in the next two lectures, we'll talk about specific challenges before we then start getting into the actual content. Uh, we'll look at some hist uh, political aspects before we then go to planetary boundaries, assessing boundaries and assessing the environmental damage and goods that certain things can do via life cycle assessments. And then we also have um, some invited lecture. So for example, lecture seven is an invited lecture from a professor from Hanover who is looking at ethics and morals of sustainability. Then Daniel Goldman from our own university will talk about the circular economy. Then we have something on circular societies and then we look beyond those concepts, um, how we can restructure society before we have the technology critical session. Most of you probably already have noticed that there are weird additional things in brackets here. On the slide set, as well as in the announcement on StudIP that I made, there is a link to our course website. If you haven't found it yet, it's LTG, so limits to growth, ltg.etce-lab.de where we have prepared a series of videos for you, and where we will also upload always all these videos that we are recording right now. So you cannot click all the sessions yet, but once we're done recording today and Anand or Nelly edited the videos, we'll upload them and then more and more videos will become available to you. So some of them will be me or Anand being recorded in a live stream. Others we've prepared ahead of time in our lab in front of a green screen, 
and try to create something like that you maybe know from Udacity, Coursera, or all those other massive open online course platforms. So some things will be here, live sessions. Others, we will ask you to watch the MOOC videos as a replacement for those sessions or in preparation of those sessions. So whenever it says flipped classroom, it means that you will get to watch the MOOC video as a homework before the lecture starts. And then we'll do either another live lecture building on top of this here or something like a more interactive workshop seminar style thing live here in person. So flipped classroom means you prepare ahead of time. And if it just says MOOC, that means this week you can watch the video whenever you like. You don't have to be here. We won't be here. So if you're ever coming to an empty lecture room, please check the lecture schedule. And yeah, that's about it. On the, you want to go on YouTube? Or do you want to ask later? <laughs> Your decision. <laughs> Good. Um, 12th of February, we'll have an exam Q&A session. That means we'll be here and answer all of your questions because roughly a week later, we'll do the exam. We'll be, okay, I will come to the details later because we have an extra slide for that. Course organization, the course website, either clickable link or you can, um, oh, I think the, the QR code is for the matrix chat. Um, because we also offer this course not only to Digitech students, but essentially to all students of TU Cluster, all students of Westphalia, and also at Göttingen. So we might not have only students that can access our STUT IP. So we also have a public matrix chat that you can join. Nelly will post updates there, reminders there, but you'll also get the same information from STUT IP. So if you like, you can join there. Um, slides are available or will be updated on GitHub. So please take your latest information regarding the slides from GitHub. We have uploaded the first slide set to Stutapi. That will be the last slide set we put there because in it, we have the links to the GitHub and this is where you get the most recent stuff. Lecture recordings will either be re uh, available on Stutapi, GitHub, or what makes most sense on our website. So take this course website, ltg.etc-lab.de as your source of truth. What you find there is true. And if you have any questions or problems, you can ask them in the matrix chat or write us an email, but please don't write me, Anand or Nelly separate emails. Please use that email address. We all can access it. All the three of us can work on the same stack of emails. We don't have to answer the same email three times. It's way more efficient for us. And we can also make sure that you get an answer in a timely manner because usually I'm a bottleneck when it comes to answering emails, so please use that email address. We have to ignore all other emails that are written to our personal accounts um, to keep stuff a little bit more efficient. The MOOC part I briefly explained to you when we talked about the lecture schedule. Here are slightly more context, so you can watch them whenever you like. You can also repeat the quizzes contained in there as often as you like. There is no way for us to connect the results of the quiz with your performance because this is a website that doesn't store any information. So use it to understand where you are standing. Did you understand the topic? Is there something maybe missing that you need to ask or where you need to rewatch something? Usually we have something like a pre-recorded lectures there divided into nice pieces. So it's not 90 minutes one of us talking, but rather like 10 to 20 minute pieces usually. And then there's like some surrounding extra text, further resources, a quiz and other parts. And you can watch them whenever you like. And as an important disclaimer, it's still a work in progress. We're continuously developing this course. Last year it looked different than it does look now. And next year there will be a further iteration. So let us know what works well and what doesn't work. Like does this concept, it, self makes sense to you? Does it help you to study? Is it a pain in the ass? Would you like to be here in person at all times? Um, do you find bugs? Let us know. Good. This is essentially what I already explained in the, um, when we talked about the lecture schedule. So whenever there is MOOC and flip classroom, you now know what to do. Dates, times and locations, just for completeness. You're already here, at least most of you. Lecture time, 
here. Also live stream via Big Blue Button. And also if you cannot make it, we will upload the recording usually within 24 to 48 hours. Exercise Q&A session is at 3 p.m., so right after this lecture. We have sometimes more interactive stuff. And if you just have a homework to do, then please do your homework, we'll provide feedback. Um, but otherwise, this session is mostly for you, like an opportunity for you to ask questions. This is not us giving you the sample solutions. This is mostly like service provision towards you. What, where do you need help? What did you not understand? Do you need a different example? Do you have problems with the exercises? Are you not happy with your exercise results? Should we give you a different way to explain it? And if there are no further questions after 60 seconds, then we'll run away as fast as we can. So we have this famous 60 seconds counter. After no one is, like, has anything to ask or no further interest, session over. Sometimes sessions take 45 minutes. Sometimes we're done after four minutes. Depends on you and how much you would like to know and get to know from us. Good. Exercises. Second, famous, second most common question in those sessions. What do the exercises look like? First, individual work. No group submissions, unless you're explicitly told so during the seminar sessions or workshop, workshop sessions. Um, the submission of each exercise is mandatory. So if you miss one exercise, you're out, at least concerning the exam. But it's quite simple to pass an exercise. You just have to submit an empty page. That's the minimum requirement. And I can see someone already <laughs> looking slightly confused at me. What's the point? Um, a lot of the exercises that we ask you to do, or all of the exercises that we ask you to do, have a connection to this course, and we think they are useful. We're trying to teach you something or get you to a point of recognizing something. So we're not bored, we don't want to torture you, we don't want to keep you busy, there's usually a deeper idea behind each exercise. But if you are just here because you are forced to do this course, or if you think the exercise is stupid, you don't have to do it, and in order to prevent us from screening through hundreds of stupid nonsense solutions, we made this choice to make the like, actual submission optional. So empty page is required, and we would highly recommend that you really do the exercises and pro submit a proper solution. And then you will also receive feedback, but if you don't want to, your choice, you're grown up, you're free to do whatever you like. Um, so please do them will provide feedback. They have, there's a point in each exercise to be made. Some exercises will be just multiple choice quizzes on the website. There we don't give you any feedback because we don't know your results. Other say, exercises might require you to submit something. This is a submission link. There is a password for the submission link. Please don't send us your submission via email. And Important, always include your full name, your student email address, and your student ID. So the ID number, not a picture of your real ID. Um, so that we can track your submissions and note, okay, who submitted what. So you can now already submit all your empty pages if you like. Please don't do that. This is just like for you, for later to like go through it once more. Submission process in nice images. So this is where you put in the password. Then you can upload a file. Don't worry if you cannot see the file after uploading it. That's essentially a privacy measurement so that you don't see all the submissions of the other people and that they don't see what you submit. So you can submit something and then you won't see that you have submitted it. Please only submit PDFs. No weird file formats, please. Just PDFs. Also the empty pages, please, PDF. Looking, looking specifically at a certain person here, yes. <laughs> Good. If it was successful, you'll get a message that it was successful um, with respect to uploading the files. Now, the most important question, what's the exam gonna be like? First of all, in order to get to the exam, you have to submit all exercises. And then we'll have oral exams, probably, because right now I don't see 100 students here. If for whatever reason, 50, 60, 70, 80 students submit exercises, then we might have to shift to a written exam. But right now, the default option that we're planning with is oral exams. They will take place between the 19th and the 22nd of February. 
so one week after the exam Q&A session. And then we'll assign you slots, either in a single person format, that it's just you as a single person in that exam room with me and either Nelly or Anand. Or if we have really a lot of students and still try to force um, oral exams onto you, then it could also be that we have three students in an exam room and we ask you questions in a round robin way. So one person answers the first question, then a question building on top of this question answered by the next and so on and so on and so on. So either single person or three people in one exam room. Um, the net oral examination time for a single person is about 20 minutes. It's gonna be essentially a nice discussion. We ask the questions, you answer the questions to the best of your ability. And then after 20 minutes, you should know whether you're passed or not. For some of our external students, so not Digitech students, but students maybe from Göttingen, uh, we had this problem before that there was some kind of confusion whether you need to register as a guest student to participate in the exam. You don't have to, and therefore you also don't have to pay the 50 bucks to register as a guest student. Just do the exam with us. We'll give you a signed certificate or form or whatever your examination office needs in order to get the credits transferred to you so that you can use it in any way you like. Just let us know what you need from your examination office because the requirements from the philosophy department in Göttingen are different from the one of the computer science department and so on and so on. So please don't register as guest students. Another org note, we have some slides that have this self-study star in the right upper corner. This is material that is not relevant or not mandatory for the exam, but we thought it's still interesting stuff that we would like to include or at least give you access to, but it didn't make it into the full lecture. You don't have to know that stuff in the exam, but of course it's a nice way to impress us and gather some extra points during the exam or make up for some other mistakes. So purely optional stuff um, that might be interesting. We also have compiled a literature list, some being more on the popular, like in terms of, not, not popular in terms of famous, but not scientific literature, so that you don't have to read papers all the time. So some of them are like, like more really nice and easily written books, others are more scientific, um, others being a little bit provocative. You don't have to read any of those books, you don't have to buy any of those books. This is just in case you're interested in certain topics and would like to read more, those are just some recommendations or some suggestions. Um, some more, there are also further resources like the climate universities and specific talks for different topics. Um, we'll sprinkle some of those in at the end of most slide sets, then specific to the particular topic so that if you liked it or if you're interested, you can go further and deeper.